filled with snug pubs and corner shops. Ireland is the perfect place to zero in on how small establishments really tick. We took a trip up to Cullen, County Louth, to get a taste of this small Irish village. One man is the backbone behind Cullen. We were lucky enough to sit down as he told us about the history. Paddy. Paddy. Oh, he's just, he's unbelievable. I am Paddy, Paddy Waters from Cullen, County Louth. I do, I really think Paddy, no, I mean, honest to goodness, he's just, he's the life and soul of any party. <laughs> Not only does Paddy run the local pub, he runs most of the street. W uh, Waters and Cullen, uh, from 1954, we're not just a public house. We had a small grocery shop, and then we moved into the food business, and we had an off sales. We still have an off sales, and well, like a rural village, we're the undertakers as well. We're in the auctioneers right now, which is next door to his shop and pub. Then across the road from the undertakers, which Paddy owns as well. He's a busy man, and recently he's been renting out the pub to keep up with his other businesses. Still, he runs this street. In the Celtic Tiger, I could see guys, auctioneers, putting up signs and they just stand there and collect the money. And you get the deposit and you get paid. So I said, this is a great way to go. So I became an auctioneer. So I'm a member now of the MIPAV and I like the auctioneering trade. Because uh, I'm meeting loads of people. And then I have contacts from the pub back through the years. And even the funerals, there will be contacts from my parents that you'd have there. So it's all a family business more so than that. My grandmother came to work in a place called Dara Beg, which is next door to the pub here on our East Street in Colin. And she met at Patrick Waters. And my father was one of four sons and a sis one sister. They all went to England. But the sister stayed home and he stayed home. But a pub came for sale, is the pub we have now. And he explained to Carragher that he was going to buy Brown's pub that night for 800. And Carragher said, you won't, he says, but they'll buy this one, but it's going to cost you 1,200 pounds. So that was an awful, that was like 800,000 going to 1.2 million. You know, it was, it was savage money at the time in the mid, early 50s. So he proceeded to get around his friends at the time, and he did. And he purchased Carragher's pub. So That's the pub back in the 70s. When the boys be coming home from the sales yard at night, they had bought a goat. And the, the goat in the bar feeding him whiskey, milking him at the same time, and drinking the milk. But then we progressed, things got further, we get to fine dining. We had no more goats. Well, Paddy would be a man for stories. Yeah, Paddy, Paddy, has, yeah. Paddy, Paddy has loads stories of stories. Oh, oh, he, I'm trying to think he just, his father before him was the same. They're just great <laughs> storytellers. <laughs> now, how did the cooking start? Well, it was always a trace because our grandmother was a cook. The man was shot in this village here and he was dead for a week in a car. And me being the local undertaker, the sergeant said, you'd take that man away to be in band or a post-mortem. We'd done that and the local sergeant said to me then, where could we get food for 40 detectives for three weeks at a time for this? The researcher going to find out who more than a fella called Duffy. I said, I'll look after it. But we had no cooking facilities at all. Nothing. We were just <laughs> serving beer. So I went all my neighbours, every deep fat fire that could be found. <laughs> and we lined them up on a big bench. <laughs> and we fed the 40 guards for, and detectives for three weeks with chicken and chips. The Undertaken, I had friends in Undertaken in Dulekin They said the pub and the shop and the Undertaker normally goes well together and there's nobody else Undertaken in your village and it should be a great idea. I had the hairs, you get the clients, we'll all be happy. So I proceeded to go ahead to be an Undertaker and I went training with them people. And one of the days we had a funeral up in Kenstown and we were invited over for refreshments after the burial. Went into the pub, those beers had, and uh, those sandwiches had. Everybody's in good form, the grave diggers come in, the family were in good form, they started to sing, and they were giving us beer. And I said, this is a great game, you're going to get paid for this as well. This, this is the way to go. Now, <clears throat> where am I going to go here? 
the funeral we had today, uh, an elderly lady of 87 years of age, that's nature. Someone is going to look after that funeral. That's normal. But what I do not like is burying a friend or someone I know, or especially young people, because nobody wants that. There's some family suffering somewhere. My father died at 91 years of age. It was a celebration. You know, it's nature. But burying young people is not just the game I like to be into. But the way we worked the old shop was, you had ledgers, everybody, boot, everything. Nobody paid for nothing. But Christmas Eve was the big day. You settled up all accounts Christmas Eve. And they'd all be drunk again to finish up. Because my father had to give me a jug of whiskey and he'd give him one. And again, closing them by having my father be all over the shop. In time to come, the public trade, I think it's in trouble. If you see the shopping list coming out of Tesco or Little or Aldi, it's fine. But all you see is the neg of a bottle of wine sticking out of the top of them and slabs of beer. Because of the price and drink driving, which is very important. In the 60s, the ladies didn't go to the pub. It was only in the 70s then. And we had a bit of music and the pub had really well. And, as all the pubs in the village done well. It's all the country people have, really. That's the way I look at it, because it's an outlet for people. Some people don't get out to the door, other than to go into the local and have a crack and have a, have a drink. They mightn't have too many, but it's just an outlet. We came looking for pubs, but found an entire community. Colin, County Loud, stole our hearts. <laughs>